Welcome back to the Almost Friday podcast. Uh, we got Rory Scovel on coming a little bit later in the episode. Um, we had a great interview with him. And uh, before we get into the episode, we want to shout out our sponsor, Dadgrass. Uh, Dadgrass is great. And you can get 20% off if you go to dadgrass.com slash almost Friday. Dadgrass.com slash almost Friday. They're sponsoring the episode. They're great. Let's get into the episode. Are we recording? Yeah. Your heroes are dumb. Everyone you look up to and you think is important. You're stupid. I don't really have any. You're yeah. dumb. Who's your hero? Who you look up to? I don't really know. You didn't look up to anyone? Growing up, maybe. Honestly, no surprise. It kind of looks like you just figured it out as you went. <laughs> yeah, I did. I don't really have like, oh my God, like a... like. Why'd you say it like that? I don't know. I don't really have You've any. never looked up to anyone? No one you aspire to be like? No, you were because, just you were just okay being this way. No, like I would be like a fan, like a fan of somebody, mm-hmm. but like whom? But not because I wanted to be them or like look up to them. Like they're just a good singer or whatever they are. I don't have any the one that I'm like, oh, I want to be them. You wanted to be a YouTuber growing up, right? You did say sure. That. So who influenced you to Jenna feel that way? Marbles? No, she. Who? Didn't. Who then? Um, I mean, I really like, well, not really anymore, but I like, I think like, ugh, I don't want to not even answer this question because I don't want to be made fun of. Answer it. You're going to get made fun of. Yeah. You want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> Disgusting. You, you want to be a Disgusting. stand-up comedian. Yeah. It's gross. And I hate myself. Yeah, when exactly. Myself. Disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. You have to give a name. Give a name. It could be made up. It could be a na- it could be a made up name. Well, I don't I wouldn't say I'd look up to any of them. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Holy fuck. Say it. Ah! Um I think David Dobrik used to be ta- very talented. Dude. You looked up to David Dobrik. No, I, this is what I mean. Like I don't <laughs> look up to him. I think he like You know there's soldiers that go to war and die for your freedom and you're talking about David David fucking Dobrik's drive. No, no, no. There's like, a man in his who field, leapt like, onto a grenade field, and laid down you're on literally it. Asking, and it like, exploded his stomach in and imploded his guts. You're asking And you're who talking in my about field. looking up to David Dobrik. You're asking who in my field did I look up to? People saw the second plane hit the Twin Towers and they signed up for the Marine Corps. You're this. literally, you're, you guys just said the same fucking thing. You look up to comedians, stand up comedians. That's I never said I looked up to shit. a stand up comedian. I when did I say that? I've never looked up to anyone in my life. You know who my hero is? My dad. The same with mine. Like, I just, I never said I looked up to the, the David Dobrik. I said it, I, like, whatever. His work was great. Which, like, oh, burn know. her. Which, light her on fire. Burn her! <laughs> Hold on. What did you do this weekend? I was in Miami. Oh, how was Miami? It was really good. I met some people. Holy shit, did you? So I met this guy, and... Yeah. I hate that you guys ask me things. And Go! Th- speak, 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 speak. Okay, met this guy. He was like, yeah, like, if if we went home together, like, you can handle me. And, and he, You couldn't? Yeah, couldn't. And then he looks at his friend and goes, right? Like, she couldn't handle me. And I'm, like, looking at him, like, why are you... Look, why are you trying to convince me that your friend can't handle me, whatever? He goes, trust, trust. G- g- we'll bet on it. And he, he gets my number, and he texts me this. He goes... If you don't have sex with him, the bet is off. But we will dis- be disappointed. If he impresses you, you win $100. If he does not impress you, I'll give you $200. You, oh my God, What's Emily. What's wrong with people, bro? That's How do you saying. attract the worst people? I don't know, but... No, 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 no. You have to start thinking about it. I know. You have to start figuring out why. Like, if those guys died, I think that's good. I'd be I okay. know. I wouldn't. I mean, I obviously didn't do like I walked away after that moment. Did you? Yes. What did you guys do this weekend? Uh, This weekend. Sit up, Will. Nope. This weekend, I. uh, Do I actually need to? Yeah. Because then you're not going to be in the mood. No, he looks good. You're in frame, I think. I know, I'd probably but just, look like a freak. Yeah, but you're going to be like depressed the entire time if you just sit like. I'm not depressed. I'm having a great week. Yeah. Oh, good. I decided I'm gonna, you know, have you heard fake it till you make it? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do that with being happy. And it's gonna work. Okay. I'm really proud of you. And I'm gonna stop showering on the floor. Okay. You should. I'm gonna stand up in the shower now. I'm gonna be Iron Man. Okay. I'm gonna be invincible. And I'm gonna stop 
I'm gonna stop eating laying down. I'm gonna get up. Oh, I... I'm gonna digest my food vertical. Do you wash the bottom of your feet in the shower? You're disgusting. I didn't even tell you whether or not I did that. I'm just asking. God, she's picturing you showering right now. I know. Sick and fucking disgusting. Do you think I'm on wiki feet? Um, Can we make a wiki feet article for me? Can we put you on you feet finder? You probably are. Look me up on wiki feet. See if I'm on there. You know piss it, Dude, you know what chaps my ass? What? <laughs> Is that everyone thirsts over you and nobody finds me physically attractive. That's not true. Yes, it is. It's true. All the comments are like, Will Angus, daddy. And then they're like... There are no comments. Who's there. that dyke over there? And it's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, everyone was commenting on Cody Ko's podcast thinking that Will looks like Ashton Kutcher. See? Uh, I'm like so confused. I no, everyone says a mean though. comment. That they, they look like Ashton... Someone said, um, I knew Ashton Kutcher had a special needs brother, but I didn't know it was... It, him That's or something so like that. Look up. Does he have a special? Yes, needs he, brother? Does. he does. No, I don't. He, well, no, he does. I know he's he's got a disability. I don't know if it's like uh, mental. So he's special needs. Yeah, I guess. Sorry, sorry, Ash. So that felt good to hear. Um, also, also, that was mean. Yeah, this really. Oh, dude, me and my friends came up with a new term: comic canceling. What is it? It's where you want you cancel someone, but you kamikaze them. Like it's the only way to get them canceled. D- explain further. Please. I don't know. What do you mean, kamikaze? Like, oh, dude. I, I try to get you canceled, but in order to do it, I have to take myself down, too. Dude, Emily, we got you pretty good with the voice filter, huh? Literally not at all. Nearly. I knew the second that you played it, I was like, why are they doing this? Why are you wasting your time? <laughs> Liam and Will like, sent me a video that I was in, and they deepened my voice. <laughs> it was so obvious. You could have just done it a little bit. Excuse me, I'm just going to wait. You said beat it, sweetie. What? Are these guys like, uh, obviously, that's not my fucking voice or even remotely what I would sound like. Excuse me, I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> you should have done it a little bit less, and then I would have been. Well, they had it bit. way deeper, and I said, She's not gonna believe it. Please bring it down. You should have brought it down even less. I know, I wanted to. There's that was so as low as it could go. Obvious. I was like, You guys are literally sitting here with no life. I was yes. going to say live. <laughs> correct. And life at the same time. Go on, correct. Trying to prank me with the stupidest fucking prank. Correct. We did, we gotcha. <laughs> I haven't had a good day. Hey, come on. <laughs> in months. Liam, rub his tummy. Please rub my tummy. There's dry cum all over it, so oh, just be on. careful. Come on. It's not mine. What a jerk. I tried. I I asked Will to come over last night and scratch my back until I fell asleep, and he didn't come. So what's That's up with that? That's so mean. I, you know what's sad? I I walked all the way there. <laughs> <laughs> I got to your gate, and I thought this is stupid. I walked all the way back, and then I had to let Catherine let me in because I locked myself out. And she said, "Where are you?" And I said, "You ask a lot of fucking questions." She's a real, ask a lot of fucking questions. She's a real piece of work. You said, you're a piece of work. <sighs> but I was close. My lady was talking about going to the Grand Canyon and how I think there was something like someone fell mm-hmm. while she was there. Mm-hmm. Like uh, into the canyon? Mm-hmm. <gasps> and I thought about how funny it would be to commit suicide at the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> like just, I thought it was funny just like taking like a step off and going. And then I thought... Uh, even funnier, someone full spree- speed, full speed sprinting and running off the Grand Canyon to kill themselves. I, and then I thought, oh, there's nothing funnier than a full speed suicide. We're like, you know, like usually you think of like a guy like stepping up on a ledge and just stepping off. But a dude just like getting a 10 yard head start, full tilt, running off the edge. Like everyone's seeing that. <laughs> You're at the Grand Canyon so with your family. Dark. And... Because if you're at the Grand Canyon with your family <laughs> and you saw a guy step off the ledge and kill himself, you'd be like, oh, maybe he felt like something happened. But there's no questions about a guy going back to the edge of the parking lot and just full tilt getting in a three-point stance and fucking hurling My himself My main up. concern here is that you're sitting in your home thinking about the ways that people commit suicide. You looked up to David Dobrik. Yeah. I never fucking yeah. said that. You guys are I'm, so annoying. You looked up to David Dobrik, so I'm concerned that I you're thinking of suicide I never fucking said that. Wait, looking is, up to him. Isn't it funny, though? 
full speed suicides? You made me pick a YouTuber that I liked, and then you, you said you... that I, you put. Did words I hold in my a gun mouth. to your head and make you pick? You guys are so fucking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Emily, I, I, cher- I cherish you. <laughs> I'm starting, to, I know I was in Miami this weekend, but I'm starting to get a little offended that I'm not invited to your little hangout. Well, no, it's, okay. Well, you're crazy drunk and you're hard to be around when you drink alcohol. <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to well, fucking. Well, I'll stop being like that. No, you're, you're not, not like that. Well, you so. just ask me so many questions when you get drunk. What do I ask you? About my life and stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to talk. You're literally that. making that up. <laughs> no, I'm I not. don't. Well, you're a gaslighter when you're drunk I'm... and a liar. <laughs> you actually are, dude. I know. It's crazy. It's but it's for like fun. It's not. For yeah, but you're. Do you know what's sick. funny? I was I was listening back to the podcast where we said things that we like and hate about each other, and the thing that you said you liked about me and Will. You is that re-listen to this podcast? Just that one section. How sad are you? <laughs> yeah, dude. What? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. That was mean, and I think you're awesome. Go on. Thank you. Um, and the one thing that Liam's, first of all, it was interesting that we, we would have such different answers these days, but. No, mine would be the same. I don't really? remember what I said. Well, you said that you like, that me and Will are fun drunks, so. You said you didn't like my mustache. I think about it every morning. <laughs> that you did say that. Think, I think about it every single time I look in the mirror. Did you? Write- and I go, I go, I hate how you look, you fucking pussy. You look, I tell myself every morning. You look like you just hit puberty and you don't know how to shave, <laughs> you fucking loser. You just look and like you're a... fat and you need to go work out. You need to walk. Get out of bed, cunt. <laughs> you look like a villain. And that's because you told me you didn't like my mustache. You're like a villain. Like a like, <laughs> little bit of Waluigi vibe. <laughs> I wish I could do a curly. Dude, oh, I could play the perfect Waluigi. Because he's super lanky and has that gross stash. And he's got a Holy So shit. you were supporting me. You should me the dress as him for yeah. Halloween. You know what this is called? This is called a hard stare. Yeah. I learned it in Paddington, too. Every time Good you movie. leave the room to go to the bathroom, that's what I get from him. What? It's really scary. I try to convince her to kill herself every time <laughs> you leave the room. I get, like, the scariest stare from him. Oh, that's what... Dude. So, could you tell when I came in yesterday morning that I was in a, I was in a funk? No. But, I, I mean, now yes, now that you say it, like, uh, the signs are obvious, but I just thought you... This is going to sound stupid, but I just thought you hadn't had a coffee yet. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I hadn't. Uh, so I was... I just thought you were tired. I was tuckered out, but I was also just in a... In a just in a weird, weird way. Well, I was going to ask, but then I was like, oh, he's just going to... Uh, yeah, know. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, he'll figure it out. But what, uh. I, what I did is I took a page out of Jason's book. Jason... Jason, so you want to talk about sad dudes? <laughs> that's, a, that's a sad dude. But he's like, uh, like you got to worry about him becoming like a domestic terrorist. Yeah. Terrorist I mean, I, w- I couldn't blame him, though. No, no, no. I would if get... I found out he did like the Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah. Like the next version of that. Like if he put a bunch of like bombs so under FBI. cars in Walmart, I'd get why. CIA. But he'll just leave. Keep an eye on him. He'll leave our apartment and just like go on a quest. Like he'll just walk. Dude, he's going to different lows and buying fertilizer. He's yeah. buying the maximum <laughs> amount they allow you. Then I went on the beach and I took a long walk and then crazy. So it's foggy. There's a ton of fog out. I'm in a fucking black hoodie and a in a beanie and some sweatpants. I got headphones in and I'm listening to something in a way. And I was like, dude, I am I am Batman. And I felt so so much like Batman in that moment that I started running. And I ran, I jogged for a mile and a half straight. And on the I, sand, too. And I, yeah. And I just kept telling myself if, like, I was doing the David Goggins, is that his name? Yep. Yeah, the, the, the Navy Seal. Seal. Yeah. I was like, if you stop, you're a pussy. You're, yeah, everyone's, you're going <laughs> to. And I bullied myself into going for every time I thought about stopping, I'd be like, if you stop, you're going to, I'm going to eat a handful of sand. I'm just going to, before thinking about it, grab it. <laughs> handful of sand you're gonna eat it but you did stop at a mile and a half i stopped eventually yeah so but so did you eat some sand no i literally ran to these rocks there was like a rock wall and i was like i can't get so you did quit i did eventually and then i made a friend i went i bought a basketball and i started shooting hoops i was i was white man can't jump i was shooting by myself and then 
Um, you invite me to do stuff like that. It's actually crazy when people are like, what do you do in your free time? It wasn't time. Uh, okay. Continue. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, to hear the answer, oh, I started walking and then I ran and then I bought a basketball and made a friend, like, is... Like, he, he was a black man. He was a black teen. Came up to me and he said, hey, can I get some shots in? And I said, sure. And then we talked about the Patriots. And we shot around a basketball for 20 minutes. And they said, I got to catch a flight. He was flying home and he left my life forever. That was my day. That actually sounds very wholesome. It was. It was what extreme. day was that? Huh? This was yesterday around 7.30, 7. A.M.? No, at night. I was out there. Dude, I was, I left for the walk around four, and I was just getting my demons out. Mm. Hooping. What's, like, your girlfriend doing during this time? Is she not wondering, like, oh, where are you? And you're like, oh, I, uh. We don't live together. Yeah, I wait. know, but it's just, like. I what does she do if you're not around? Does she just, like, sit against <laughs> in a blank room? No, no, no but if I text my boyfriend and he was, like. Oh, I went on a walk and then I started sprinting because I thought I was Batman and then I met some random man and then I blah, blah, blah. I would be like, are you okay? All right, let's talk to Rory Scovo. We wanted to, I mean, he's such a talented comedian. He's done so many different things, done so many different projects. We kind of wanted to just interview him this episode. Normally, we we like to joke around, fuck around, talk about whatever. But uh, I really wanted to kind of you know pick yeah. his brain we never met him so this was the first time we we're meeting rory so it was more interviewee yeah we fuck around a little bit it's very he's very interesting guy um really enjoyed talking to him yeah for you comedy nerds out there this is gonna be yeah this is gonna one. be a great episode for you comedy nerds um let's get in there rory welcome to the pod yeah thank you thanks, thanks for, for having me yeah thanks, thanks for, for coming on, on. <laughs> yeah absolutely um I, I appreciate it. This setup is insane. I love it. Well, it's Im- designed by Emily, our producer. Um, it's brand new. You should have seen the old setup. It would. It feels like you're drowning. <laughs> the blue walls. There's shit all over the place. Yeah. Now it's easy to focus. Yeah. I mean, this is straight up. I mean, anytime someone's got the umbrella lighting thing, mm-hmm. um, which I don't know what it is or how it functions. But well, thank God you don't know that, because they're supposed to go the other way. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, they're, <laughs> you, I would never know that. But just seeing them, I'm like, that's professional right there. It's, where do you guys record? We are in West Hollywood off of Melrose. Okay. Nice. And it's great. It's our first, like, sort of official office sort of studio setup. And we... We've made it work, and we've slowly been like, you know, kind of trugging along with the the Patreon, and we we hopefully have a deal coming up very soon that'll hopefully give us like a little more investment money towards it. But mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy this landscape of podcasting and starting out and moving out. It's very like Guitar Hero. You start out <laughs> in like the <laughs> just the shack playing music, and you're slowly <laughs> trying to work your way up to the stadium. But yeah, it's cool. Nice. And uh, you said this morning you had a you were at a parent teacher <laughs> yeah yeah weird to weird to go to one of those and be on the the other side of the table and have someone kind of explain like my grades were bad my whole life they've always been bad <laughs> and uh so anytime they were telling me my daughter's grades like something wasn't great i was like it's fine i was like things work out <laughs> like i'm not even like like well she could like work on this and of course my wife who's like great i mean, yeah well no we'll have conversations we'll do this thing and we'll, we'll talk about it and i'm just like no nah, i think she's smart she'll like it'll just click at some <laughs> yeah. point i think <laughs> so i don't know that anyone's wanting to hear that dad who's like not totally invested but yeah super super weird to to be at that mm-hmm. do you only have one kid uh, just one, yeah. What's it like being a dad and doing stand up and you know acting? And it's uh, it's it's great. Uh, <laughs> saying it like that, <laughs> it's great, and I love it. Um, no, it's it's interesting because you have to try to find that balance of making sure. Like, I want my kid to realize that I have a job of like, you know, where someone has gone after their dreams and tried to do something. Uh, out of the ordinary a little bit for you know just your average person um but also keep it somewhat normal and not let it be uh steered by being gone too often or missing a lot of things for it so it's it's great i i don't really know how i manage it or or do it but it somehow seems to mm-hmm. to work dude i watched your uh the special last night the one you did at the relapse there was like a documentary yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was one of the most impressive things I've ever uh, seen. Thanks. Did Thank you, you uh, 
uh, when when did you shoot that? Was that 2018? 2018, March. Yeah, March 2018. Um, yeah. We were. I was just going to go do those shows. I've always been interested in wanting to just go on stage and like mm-hmm. totally improvise the whole thing. And so I put those six shows together. And you know we were going to charge just a little bit of money, and it was. I, I really kind of thought I'd go and just bomb six straight nights mm-hmm. with like these little flashes of maybe something that could work. And then I told uh, my buddy Jay Larson, you guys know Jay, I'm sure, and he was like, "No, you got to go and shoot that. You got to go and film it." So we got some money from Absolutely, and we went down, and it became a documentary. That wasn't really the goal, mm. but now you know we really set up the room, and now we're like, "All right, we're here. We've got these cameras. We're trying to really, really do something." And so, yeah, luckily the shows didn't bomb. It ended up being a lot of. Uh, a lot of fun and it was eye-opening a lot of that material that is in that you know i now have footage of the birth of a joke essentially Mm -hmm. and a lot of it is in going to be in my next special which will be kind of in many ways like the death of that joke i'm not gonna do it anymore so it's walking away from it like oh i'm kind of glad i have these the the birth and death of a of a joke because i don't know that you Mm -hmm. really capture that um (laughs) Well, so, many times. so you had like, um, I think for each night you showed about like 10 minutes of footage. Yeah. How long did you go? It was like an hour? Of yeah. Recording? So the shortest show I think was like 35 or 40 minutes on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, it was still like a fine show. Like if you only came to that show, you'd be like, that was fine. But comparatively, it was the worst show of the, like the six shows. And I think cause Monday ended up being so fun and good and like surprising. Cause I really thought I was going to bomb. And I was like, oh my God, that was like such a drug. I loved it. I tried to just kind of have that happen again on Tuesday, and I think I was a little too arrogant. Mm. So I stepped into Tuesday thinking, oh, this will just work again. And instead, you know, it was a different size crowd, it was different people, and it it didn't work the same way. Uh, so that was a, a humbling lesson early on. But yeah, I'd say I got around 50 to an hour each night, and it was incredible. It was really a cool experience. Are you still doing shows like that? I try to. I haven't done it in mm-hmm. a while, but I really love going up with nothing and seeing, like, really just the pure comedy of something. I, I wish more comics would go on stage and try it, not to make that their thing they do, but to really try it to see, like, oh, yeah, if you're a funny person in general, it should work. You know, you're just talking and then you kind of stumble into something. Uh, but the amount of material that comes out of it that you'd never sit down and think of to write Mm -hmm. but when your back is against the wall you think of the craziest topics and the craziest shit and you also become more vulnerable you're willing to like just say the truth about something and see where it goes and i think an audience is also more forgiving Mm -hmm. you know if you're about to say something you really think or something that's super vulnerable or something you're embarrassed by there's really no judgment there because an audience is almost like i can't believe you're just yeah straight up talking <laughs> yeah dude i was laughing so hard when you were like yeah i just threw on gay porn just to watch it <laughs> right like, yeah it was so obvious yeah. that, like you were just pulling from like the only thing you knew <laughs> yeah like, it was it was awesome that was I, I mean that was wednesday night and that truly was one of those moments where that happened where i had said something <laughs> and my brain was like just say that you've watched gay porn <laughs> and that's and when i said it and it got a laugh i also felt the audience like come in a little closer like mm-hmm. like oh this is interesting like why what did you see what you know all those questions <laughs> yeah. start coming up and i was like oh like these things that we at least as comics but even as people that we try to hide from each other or keep secret like we we have some secret to keep or we're so unique and yeah. different in our embarrassment and then you say something you realize so many people have the exact same <laughs> you know sort of secret or yeah. embarrassment yeah so. no it's awesome to see like the audience kind of start out not really bought in, and by the end, you like you're ripping off all the tablecloths and like throwing tapes around them. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. Yeah. By the way, you guys got to watch this special. <laughs> What's the name of the special? Uh, it's it's kind of has two names. It's Live Without Fear and Live Without Fear because we mm-hmm. we do sort of the, the story about Bob Wood at the theater, um, which wasn't a focus till uh, Scott, the director, went and interviewed him and about the theater, which I told him I was like, "There's a crazy story about how this place exists." And so he went and interviewed him, and he was like, oh, I've got the other half of this special. We're mm-hmm. going to cut from footage over to his story, and we'll just keep doing that back and forth. And then uh, I had a friend that passed away in uh, December of 2018, and I, in a dream one night, I just woke up the next morning, and I was, the the words like fear and like live without fear, like it felt like something, I, an idea or a sentence that I came across in a dream, and I was immediately like, I go, that fits what this is for 
both of us. I was like, so maybe mine is live without fear, but his is his whole life. He's just been going and he's not afraid of like the failing or losing the theater, you know. That's mm-hmm. cool. One of, the, one of the jokes I I saw you like the inception of, like you were saying, was uh, you coming on stage one time and just asking everyone about anal mm-hmm. and if they've had <laughs> anal and then it's just to, if they've butt fucked and then it's like the, like you can't you can't say without a southern accent it's so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah thanks thanks yeah, for but watching. that's one of those things where we were having a conversation we we're like no way that was like like come on like he's done that once eight years ago in fucking dc oh or yeah something, and like well that was born out of uh uh being at a show in la and being so bored with my material that i said to the guy because that that special is not improvised okay so i said to the guys uh or the comics in the green room i was just like i was like i think we go on stage and just say the word anal <laughs> I, and so i was like how long do we think like let's we were t- kind of taking wages like how long how many times can i say it or how long can i say it and I kind of thought, oh, I'm just going to keep saying it. I will lose the whole audience because it'll just be obnoxious <laughs> and it won't actually be that funny. And I went out and the moment I said anal one time, got this huge laugh and it kept getting funnier every time I said it. And after that set, which didn't have a lot of jokes after it with the anal, like anything under that topic. And I came backstage and I was like, that's staying in the act. I was like, I'm saying that at the beginning of every show. I was like, I can't believe that got that response. And it kept working. Like any audience, it just sets the bar right out of the gate. You're like, this will be R-rated. <laughs> this is mm. this is a topic right out of the gate. So, How often do you do uh, <clears throat> just like dares like that in green rooms with other comics? Because I've done stand-up, but I'm like everyone I'm hanging out with for the most part is terrified already. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, no, but occasionally someone will be like, you won't say that. Yeah, and that's always the most fun thing ever. To go I, up and be like, I think so too. Yeah, yeah. I, I if if a good if a going comes up that isn't just like for the sake of doing it, but just something to like, I don't know, create interest or it does feel like it's kind of walking a line. Like I'm I'm all for a lot of that stuff. I had done some shows early on where I tried to go on stage and see how long I could not talk at all, and that like just doing stuff like that, especially when you're coming up and like you know you're doing mics and stuff. It's such a good exercise too because. It it changes your your perception of what this job is. It's not punk rock, but I don't know how to describe it. It felt like Kyle stand up's version of punk rock. Yeah. Of like I don't fucking care if the audience likes it, and sometimes they fucking hate it a mm. lot. And you and you leave yeah. the stage being like, all right, I wasted my chance yeah. to be funny tonight. I, I was telling you this one time. I, I was talking. Oh, fuck, I don't even know who I was talking to, but I was like explaining how I had a bit about 9-11. It was right around 9-11 this year. And someone just says, open it by asking if anyone's ever lost a loved one on 9-11, like if they did. And then I did, and everyone said no. And it ended up, then everyone (laughs) laughed when they said, I was like, oh, so then I can do this joke. But then I got off and I was like, oh, I had no plan for if someone raised their hand and was like, yes. And said yes. Oh, just, yeah, yeah. I yeah. would have just been like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but that's also kind of fun, too, like to yeah. see what happens if someone says yes, because you might your back might be so against the wall in that moment that the funniest thing might come out of it or like some natural response, <laughs> yeah. you know? Dude, that's sick, though. It's like, I feel like you're an adrenaline junkie or something, because like, I would not be able to go on stage with my back so against the wall. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it, it's sick to me. Well, I think if you, I mean, I, I think we're doing it kind of all the time uh, anyways. You know, I mean, there's, there's nothing we're discussing now that's like some pre-thought out or, you know, uh, your scripted kind of moment. And I think if you're just, if when you're with your friends, if you are funny, to me, that's kind of what it, is I know the element is different up there because now these people aren't our friends and they're not really setting us up to be funny. But if you go up and you just start talking, the the thing is, well, what do I talk about? I mean, that's what we're doing every time we go on stage. Like, oh, what will I talk about that will be funny or interesting? And some random joke, like for instance, the nine eleven thing. Like when you go on stage, that audience isn't sitting there like, oh, I hope he covers 9-11 when he gets <laughs> up here. So when you do bring it up, you almost have to try to talk them into seeing the the humor of this thing. And it's not a natural, organic flow of conversation. But if you go up there with no plan, it is like wildly natural and organic. And you realize, oh, I just have to keep talking, hoping I hit something where the light bulb will go off and be like, oh, more, more about that. Like mm-hmm. stay in that and find stuff in that. And it's... Yeah, it is. 
I guess it is a bit of an adrenaline druggy kind of. <laughs> when did you start doing it? Because you started doing open mics in DC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I assume you started doing written material, or were you doing improv just from the jump? It was. Uh, I would improvise on stage, but it would be off of jokes that I was like trying to like figure out or had kind of written. And that's only because I started doing improv classes. Like when I moved to DC, I went to all the 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 mics in town to sign up, and there was like a month long wait. Which is crazy because you think there's probably only so many comics in D.C., but there were so many, and there's only so many shows. Uh, so it was like a month-long wait, and in that month, I had signed up to learn uh, improv, start taking classes, and so I was taking that. And so by the time I got on stage, you know, wildly nervous of like, how do I do this job and, and what are jokes, I had also had enough classes behind me to realize like, all right, yeah, relax, and everything doesn't have mm. to be funny, and like, sometimes not playing it up to be funny is, ends up being funny. So... There was an instinct that had sort of started to form, I think, to like be off the cuff and relaxed in those moments. But it takes just so much repetition. Has anything like insanely crazy happened to you while doing stand up? Because um, <laughs> I think probably I was just a lot. Say, like I, was, I just love to remind Liam that someone had a panic attack during his set. No, oh, no, really? No, that's <laughs> someone got up. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Someone, fl- no. Someone mm-hmm. got up and ran away. No, nope, someone had a panic attack. <laughs> I don't know what it was about. Like what's something like crazy like that? I <laughs> I remember this one time in Vancouver, um, it, just off to the right from where I was on stage. I just this this yelling started, and then a full on fight between two huge dudes. Like one was the bouncer, and this other guy was like, I mean, they both looked like football players. And they they get into a fight and like people at the table had gotten like, you know, hit by some stray bunches and like getting shoved. But these two dudes were so big, no one was like tro- jumping in to like break it up because it's like, oh, I can't do anything. Yeah. And so I remember I just grabbed my beer off the stool and I sat down and I just put the mic down and I watched the fight <laughs> and we watched it for five minutes move around the room a little bit and then slowly it went into the lobby and someone just closed the doors <laughs> and it kind of started to go away and like cops showed up and they got uh taken off and like questioned and then the room just kind of got put back together and people collected themselves and sat back down and we're talking about like five minutes of a fight five people of like getting back to their <laughs> table because everyone like kind of got up and shifted too sat back down and this woman over to my left she yells out, follow that. <laughs> and I just grabbed the mic and I was like, are you kidding? I was like, this is the greatest thing to follow. I have so many questions for everybody in that section. And so it became the rest of my set was just analyzing what the fuck just happened uh, at this show. But yeah, that, that like st- shit like that, it doesn't happen all the time, but truly the most random shit like that blows your mind that you you don't predict yeah yeah like one time when i was in massachusetts i was at a bar huge bouncer six seven six eight dude and his equal another six seven six eight dude just start going at it and (laughs) i saw other bouncers just kind of be like let him let him go this is a pride thing (laughs) let's let this happen (laughs) and hockey and hockey (laughs) yeah everyone in the bar just watched and kind of like I almost wanted to clap when it was done just for the sport of it because they both were gentlemen about it. Like one guy, the bouncer ended up winning and the other guy was like, okay, I'm leaving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was so fun. It was like MMA. They just shook hands and hugged at the yeah. end. Like great fight. Yeah, it's like in nature. Like he's he's won. He's yeah. won the woman now. The, yeah. <laughs> the other guy just had like a monster can in his hand already to like hold it up after the fight. That's awesome. Taking a quick Taking break. Taking a quick break. Taking a quick break. To talk to you about dad grass. Dadgrass.com. I get too high all the time. I get too high all the time. It It, makes me schizophrenic. It makes me want to kill myself when I I get high. I think that everyone that loves me secretly hates me. And they say that behind my back when I'm too high. And they do. And And any time I get high, I go in my room and cry unless I use CBD dadgrass.com slash almost friday dadgrass.com you won't think that people that love you secretly hate you you won't think you're on the truman show you won't think your dad and mom are doctors you won't think that there's something growing on your back that will give you cancer (laughs) 
and you're not you won't think that your roommate is plotting to kill you in your sleep dad grass dot com slash john most friday dad grass is a great great way to relax uh Basically, no THC in those. It's a lot of CBD. I think it's less than 0.3% THC. I smoked a big, fat dad grass joint last night because I was stressing. You're kidding me. And I felt awesome. I got in the shower, laid down in the shower, turned it on as hot as it could go, and just, I relaxed. I felt relaxed for the first time in months. First time in a long time. But yeah, Dadgrass is a great way to relax, guys. Look into it. Dadgrass.com slash Almost Friday for 20% off. All Dadgrass products are federally legal, and if you're 18 and older, they ship straight to your door in the U.S. Let's get back into the episode. Should we do some characters? I was going to say. Yeah. It's about time. We we have a little segment we do where we, um, a lot of what we do is we make like sketches like for TikTok, Instagram reels and stuff, Yeah, and the characters we just can't make a video with they're, they're like too stupid or too short we just do them here right the pod right liam do you want to kick off sure do you got one <clears throat> yeah uh, i got a really quick one so you're not really you- you're not doing the best job of it really explaining it because he, he, he's gonna have to get involved well i know i was about to I'm oh okay, okay 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 um all right do you want to start or should i start yeah i'll start this is a quick hitter okay <laughs> okay this is um this is ian heat <laughs> and you guys are uh, you guys are scientists, and I froze myself three hundred years ago, and you're just now waking me up. Okay. Okay. Begin. All right. Okay, I think he's up. Ian, hi. You're just from that quickly. You know he's up. <laughs> <laughs> think, are you awake? What's the age of consent? It's eighteen. Eighteen. What some, is it? Some places it's eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. That's, that's his that's, only concern. That's the whole character. <laughs> he just wanted to be. <laughs> he wanted to be higher or lower. We'll never know. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> he's back in. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't know if he's offended by eighteen. He's like, no, it should be twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's great. One of my favorite fucking. Uh, I don't know if you've seen. Uh, I mean, it's in his special too. Shane Gillis is. Uh, special live from Austin and is uh Gillian Keeves like their new special that's out they yeah. do a, <laughs> the meeting of deciding the uh age of consent it's so fucking funny yeah, that's a, that's they're all dressed one. up as old people but uh all right this is this is another quick one this one's terrible um so I had we're friends I have you guys over for the mm-hmm. big game yeah we're hanging out uh I've given you some homemade popsicles <laughs> okay you're enjoying them and you just like you kind of maybe have some questions about what's how do I make these? Okay. I'd like to still be a scientist. Okay, this one for as well. sure. Yeah, dude, these are uh, these are delicious. How'd you get this color in here? Yeah. yeah, I've never seen this color before. Yeah, genuinely, I don't know that I've ever seen this on any color palette and any spectrum. How did you? Uh, is the, are these homemade? It's uh, it's my wife's frozen tit milk. Mm. Mm. Hmm. So. Mm. I misheard you. My bad. Uh, what no, is I, it? I no. I heard. I heard. I heard. Uh, it's from what research I've done as a scientist. Uh, it's super, super. It's healthy, right? There's mm-hmm. a lot of calcium. Yeah, it's very thick, and there's it's very crystallized. I wouldn't order it at a restaurant. You know, had I known going in that your wife does she know that you have this? She's well. So she died last year. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just, I knew she was dying, so I, with a pump, yeah, got about as much milk as I could get. Yeah. Is how am I going to get it? Yeah. Going forward. And that's just, this is just part of the what I have left. So this is the last batch. These are um, the last. How, how many more do you have? Three left. I'm okay. willing to share with you guys if. I'll give you $100 each for them. Uh, I'll go $200. i will go 250 I'll go three. I fuck. I would. I want to give it to someone who's gonna really appreciate it. I'll go a thousand dollars each one. Yep. I don't have a thousand. I know you stopped at three hundred. I just want to really put the and please excuse this term. I want to put a nail in the coffin here okay. and take and take these popsicles. Yeah. Um, sold. Great. Yeah. 
and that's it. <laughs> well, I, I, the, only, the, only, no. the only reason I thought it, because I was just, just baked last night, just giggling about the term frozen tit milk, mm -hmm. I thought it was funny. <laughs> My wife's frozen tit milk was just <laughs> making me giggle so much last like, night. Where did you find that term where it made you start giggling? I was just thinking. Dude, you just see the Discovery Channel. Yeah. You know, I was flipping <laughs> channels. You see Elon is like trying to rename Twitter Titter or something. That's awesome. And he changed his name on Twitter to <laughs> Harry Balls. <laughs> Dude, he's having a full meltdown. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, he, <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like if you have that much, you know, I think about a lot, I think about how much money he has and how much Jeff Bezos has. And if you had that much money, would you, would you rather be doing kind of what they're doing or would you be like, oh, I could actually be, I, I could actually be modern day Jesus <laughs> with this, <laughs> like literally in a year, he could completely fix most things that are wrong, that need a massive amount of money and still money would keep <laughs> coming in. Mm -hmm. But you could be like, oh, I built schools, I built hospitals, I poverty i i pulled people out of poverty you would walk the street and people would be like reaching for you like you were the messiah if it's ego driven i can't believe that isn't kanye already <laughs> the did it, ultimate <laughs> yeah. the ultimate ego drive you know i would go batman first for jesus i would even do that i but you obviously you can't tell people so mm -hmm. yeah there, so there's a world where bezos is doing that yeah well i mean he's like he's trying to move to mars he's essentially doing the Batman thing. Yeah. He's, what is that? Uh, it's Blue Origin, I think is his, uh, is that the name of his like space company or something? He's sending yes. like other billionaires into space just for like joy rides. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it's hilarious. Do you believe in aliens? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think so. Yeah. What are your thoughts on them? What do you think they're here doing? I don't know if they're, I feel like you could go in so many directions of maybe they're here, maybe they've been here, maybe we are also, uh, you know, we don't really fit in the balance of this planet in any way whatsoever, like other species. <laughs> I think space and what it is and what this experience of life even is, is too grand and massive to not, to, to think that it's just contained to this fucking tiny dot of dust in the universe. It seems insane that there isn't other stuff out there. And now all this footage is coming out of like even the government being like, yeah, yeah, there's stuff like flying around. It's like, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense that there would be aliens. And it, if that is confirmed at some point, like hard and fast, there's contact been made. It will be shocking and jarring, but it shouldn't be so surprising. You know, it's absurd that we exist. So it wouldn't be, you know, I don't know. Do you guys? Do you guys believe in aliens? Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Liam's Liam's kind of. Did you like my me. answer? I, that was <laughs> yeah. so like that was intellectual. Yeah. That was smarter than anything I've said about aliens mm -hmm. on this podcast ever. <laughs> I just watched Ancient Aliens, and I come in, I'm like, just like if Jehovah's Witness knocking on doors, being like, "Have you heard the good word? Yeah, it's, this is happening. <laughs> they were here, and they built shit. They left it behind." What yeah. was that doc you made me watch? Where? Oh yeah, I've those. <laughs> They showed up in like... Oh, yeah. Virginia, Bra Brazil. Yes. Uh, yeah. I made him watch a document. What the fuck is it called? Uh, I forget. But I watched it being like, this is so stupid. And then by the end of it, again, every time I go, this happened. It's real. It's going to happen again. <laughs> yeah. Every yeah. time. Okay. Well, see, the problem is he smokes himself into a coma before he watches these documentaries. I mean, that... And then I watch fun, them. Yeah. No, it's very and you're fun. watching him sober. Well, yes. Yeah. And so I'm watching him sober. So I come back to him, challenge them, and he goes, you just, you don't get it. You're yeah. closed-minded. Yeah. You're... Dude, I am uh, I'm Joaquin Phoenix in <laughs> signs in my little closet <laughs> every night like this, like watching alien documentaries, yeah. having yeah. a full panic attack. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so fun. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it's, do you believe in them? Do you think, yeah. whether that particular one Yeah, is no, not bad. like, I don't think that they're like, they've been here yeah. uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, like what you were saying, it's insane. It's, it's, it's impossible. I think it's like more likely that they would exist than that they wouldn't. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the James Webb telescope? Mm. Are you kidding me? Mm. You were big on that when I came. I'm I was very high on it. Um, we're going to see some shit pretty soon here.
Yeah. I believe personally, just in my research. Yeah. And like, what do you mean? Like interaction contact kind of thing or like. I, th- I think we're just going to see signs of life on other planets. Maybe yeah. not intelligent life. Yeah. What was your major in college? Uh, communications, Same. journalism. Where'd you go again? Uh, I went for a semester at Central Florida, and then I transferred to University of South Carolina Spartanburg. I played soccer, so that was kind of my that kind of motivated my my going to Central Florida. That and Blair Witch Project had just come out, and I got into the film program there, and I was like, I'm going to be a filmmaker. And then I went there, wildly expensive. So then I moved back because uh, I grew up in South Carolina, moved back in state, and then just kind of made my own videos. <laughs> graduated. I was like, all right, time to be a filmmaker. And only then realized, oh, I've done nothing towards even, <laughs> like, I don't even know how you start <laughs> doing any of that. I started working at a news station. I was running, like, camera, like, you know, like a setup like this where I'm just manning one of the cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah. then I just tried stand-up one night, and that was it. And I was, like, pretty, never thinking I'd ever do stand-up. I didn't really know what it was. I always thought it was just Seinfeld. I thought you wore a suit. I thought you had a tie on, and I thought it was, like, Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, none of that is me. And then I saw David Cross do it, and I loved him from Mr. Show. And I was like, oh, I didn't know it could be, you know, I guess a version compared to Seinfeld. You say it's a little sloppier, um, even though that sounds so negative. But th- when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's more. Mm-hmm. I'm more that. I'm more Swartzen. I'm more in the like, oh, we don't need word economy. We're just being funny and having fun. So. Yeah, luckily I came across that because I don't know what I would be doing. Well, I mean, you've been doing like a ton of acting. Um, are you still interested in like creating your own movie or? Yeah, TV totally. Show? Have you I, created totally. any TV show? Uh, a TV show, yeah. I got a show, it Robbie? Uh, Robbie. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. it was supposed to be on Comedy Central. The pandemic happened. Uh, Viacom fired all the people that I was doing the show with at Comedy Central, and mm-hmm. so they just put the show on YouTube. Which is so unfortunate because, uh, well, one, I'm glad it got at least got to YouTube so people could see it because there was a moment where it wasn't going to be available at all. Right. Um, but yeah, it was. I think really such a a fun kind of grounded, funny Southern show with heart that I think a second season. You know, we fi- we learned so much in the first season that by the end of it, I was like, I know the direction that this needs to go and we can mm-hmm. sharpen it up and get more. You know, I was trying to get it more always sunny in Philadelphia kind of like comedy. Right. Like, like, obviously, that's a legendary show, but you know, you're right. aiming for like what's great. And so I was like, oh, let's try to get into that space. And then the opportunity never came up, and they they cut the show. But that's the only one I've created. But I definitely am out pitching more. Mm-hmm. I would love to finally become disciplined enough to sit and write a movie that I wanted to do something with either act in or, you know, be on the other side of the camera for, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, I'm grateful for stand up. It's kind of been such a great artistic release and something I can do to, to get some groceries. So that's been good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The acting kind of, I mean, I always wanted to act, but truly some of the things I've gotten to do, never thought that would actually happen. And now that it has, I'm not like really obsessed with her. I'm like, oh, I want to do something like really dramatic. Like, mm-hmm. I want to see if I can do, you know, the other end of the spectrum for sure. Who are some of your other, you mentioned Swartzen and Cross, uh, some other people that you really looked up to while you're getting into stand up? You know, I think Steve Martin is a genius and I love how silly he is. But I also, you know, loved Bill Hicks and how poignant he was about, you know, and the way he performed. And it wasn't necessarily. I don't care if you think this is funny. I have something I want to say and I'm going to say it like this. And I like, I love that too. The sort of preacher version of stand up. So I've always tried to like kind of find myself or aim somewhere in between those two, but it's truly anybody, anybody that goes out and just has that, that, that it factor that inspires you is great. However, they're doing it. I mean, um, when I see Kate Berlant, or Maria Bamford, like when I am on a show that they're on, or even if I'm just there to watch, um, it reminds me like, oh yeah, like let go, like be, like find it, just flow, trust it, be silly, be in the moment, pay attention to yourself as you're performing. But yeah, I don't know. When I used to see Daniel Tosh back in DC when I started, I was a few years in, I mean, he was so tight and so well-written that I told him, I was like, I think I should quit. I don't think, like, <laughs> I, seeing how you do it and how sharp it is and every word mattered and, and all that, I was like, it made me realize how much, like, sort of 
you know, uh, how much I needed to trim out of my own performance. How do you decide on like, when it's time to release a special? Because obviously, like, Louis used to do like a one a year and people yeah. do this and that, but you seem like you kind of just kind of wait and do whatever you want. Yeah, I think that it's, you know, there's a lot of, when bands come out with albums all the time, I slowly start to hate the band not like hate them I mean, that's such a harsh word but I, I'm, I'm just no longer into it anymore because it didn't seem like there's much growth between mm. albums mm. or or it just seems like they're just trying to push you know here here's another six songs here's another 10 songs and i i can't stand it um and i think stand-up is a little bit like that like if someone has the ability to create a really good hour in a year like sure go for it that's great and move you know everyone's work pace is different mine is just dictated by kind of how much i like fucking around on stage and because of that i don't really sit to try to hammer it all into an hour i would say the the hour that will be shot this year for me this tour that i'm currently on um you know it's it's stuff that has been in my joke book or in my act verbally for probably seven years and i have not been in any rush to like get rid of it. And I got to say, I think it's gotten better. And if someone were like, Oh, I heard you do that joke two years ago. I would be like, what's, well, has it improved? Cause I would think <laughs> I got rid of stuff that, you know, I finally was like, Oh, that's not really funny. I mean, the hour I'm doing right now is my tightest hour. And it's only because I realized I can't go to a coffee shop, get my notebook out and write jokes. I have to go to a coffee shop, sit down and start to organize the jokes I already have and figure out what goes with what. And I know it sounds crazy after 18 years of doing stand up, but I literally just figured that out a month ago at a coffee shop. I was like, all right, this tour's coming up. I don't want to fucking shit the bed. I want to shoot this as a special. What is the homework that I can't figure out how to do? And it was like, oh, you improvised a lot of this and then you performed a lot of it kind of making some dents here and there. But now it's like, realize that this one sentence from this joke is all you need from that joke to put it after this thing. And it was like, the light bulb was just going off for me. I was like, oh yeah, this goes here. I can finally put these four jokes that have nothing to do with each other under the context of this other joke. They actually do all kind of work. And so, yeah, I, I would like to think from this point on, I might tighten up some hours faster and shoot specials because i would love to graduate to doing bigger theaters and doing more official tours like so many of my friends have like started to do and are doing and i'm i see that and i've never been drawn to it i love a good jazz club i love 200 people in a tight space that's my favorite but i don't think i want to do this career and wonder could i have gotten to bigger theaters mm. and played bigger spaces so i i think i'm now driven by by that are my answers too long? When no, these are great. No, no. <laughs> Once I start talking, I'm like, oh, I've just, that was five straight minutes. No, these <laughs> are super yeah. insightful. People yeah. are going to love to hear this stuff. Wait, what's uh, what's your favorite special, you think? Uh, of. And you, too. Um, God, you. that's great. I mean, it's, I I have to say, Zach Galifianakis' Live at the Purple Onion is one, is a staple. Like, I can always go back to it. Um, I recently watched my buddy Nate Bergazzi's anything he does. I, I I think he's the best comic in the country. I think he's just perfect. I think it's perfect. It's perfect comedy. Um, but as far as favorite all time that I go willing to go back to, I mean, maybe it's the Zach one because I can revisit that over and over and over again. And I think it was so ahead of its time too. the fact that it's, oh, here's him doing some jokes. But also here's him being interviewed as a character. And then also here's a documentary element of him driving from L.A. up to San Francisco to mm -hmm. shoot mm -hmm. the special. And that is so smart. Uh, the fact that that was one of the first that might have been the first special on Netflix. It was early. It, it was so yeah. early. Remember the guys in the front row <laughs> yeah, with the hat? Yeah. And the guy's like, I'm with Netflix. And like, it didn't even occur to Zach by seeing it on the guy's hat that that's who this was. And that's where his special was going. Um, yeah, I think that one it was so ahead of its time but you know i loved uh uh bo burnham's inside which some people would say that's not really a comedy special but i i disagree i don't think an element of an audience is what dictates these things i think creating like an hour of comedy in whatever form is the special that you're you're making and 
I think anyone would be crazy if they were like, well, I don't know, it's not really special because you got to go in front of an audience. Like, this is way harder. <laughs> this is way harder to execute what he did. Um, I don't know. What about you guys? What? Oh, uh, wait, actually, quick question. You worked on his show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach Stone? Yeah. Were you just a... You wrote on it for like... A- no, I, I didn't write or anything. I He and I were in Montreal. We had hung out a little bit. We knew each other. We got to know each other a little bit more by working with John Doerr and doing this thing John Doerr was doing for HBO Canada. And then uh, after that, he was like, yeah, come and um, come and audition for this uh, show, uh, Zach Stone. And I was like, oh, great. And I went and did it and got the role. And Wendy O'Brien was casting and she's actually who cast Robbie. And... Uh, yeah, I just started doing it. That was that was probably the most mind blowing experience. That he is like early twenties and he's running the yeah, whole thing. Dude, it's insane. I was early thirties. I think I was like thirty one at the time, something like that. And I felt like a child who had no clue what was going on at is, all. <laughs> is that your first show that you acted on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. First like regular gig actor on the show was that one for sure. I'd done some some commercials and maybe like a guest star here and there. I can't remember. Maybe not, but definitely commercials was the, I for sure had that before, which is such a different beast. But this was like, I think I go into all these projects just waiting to get fired. I'm like, all right, don't fucking piss Zach <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Or a bow off. Yeah. Zach's don't. Just call <clears throat> Zach. Um, but yeah, that, uh, yeah, that was, that was, I love that you know that because it's, I feel like it's so obscure. That also only got one season. Yeah, I think that dude. show would have been crazy. Well, now it's I was kind surprised of, that, yeah, now I see it, <clears throat> sorry, all over TikTok and shit, mm-hmm. clips and stuff. I think, oh, good. Like, kids are like, mm-hmm. cool, finding it out because Bo's so big with, you know, Gen Z now that yeah. everyone's kind of like, oh, fuck, he had a show. Right. And now everyone's discovering, I think it's back on Netflix or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. It, it, a second season would have been insane. I think I talked to him and he talked about, he was thinking about trying to revive it now. That would be great. Now that everyone has cameras yeah. going all the time, and I was like, "Oh, that's such a fucking smart idea." Yeah, must be weird seeing him. I mean, he was already super famous from YouTube. Yeah, but like he's exploded since. Yeah, Inside definitely took it to that whatever that next tier is. Yeah, yeah I think What is still one of my favorites, and then the first. There's another one. I forget the name of it, but yeah, everything he puts out. That's why I was like. That's when you see someone grow in yeah. between things. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a massive He's gone 100%. through some stuff in, yeah. in between these. Yeah. Um, I got to see what live, and that's probably the best, like, that's probably the best special I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, it was unbelievable. Like, the whole audience was completely under a spell. Just in it. I'd yeah, never yeah. seen anything. And the light like show, the light component of it. Yeah. Pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. Taking a quick break to talk about BetMGM. As you know, we've been using BetMGM for our picks for a while now. With BetMGM, use promo code BEERS with BetMGM and you can get up to a $1,000 risk-free bet on your first bet. That's a crazy deal. Obviously, only bet if you're in a legal state where it's allowed. Um, and if you have you know, some issues with addiction, gambling addiction. There are resources that you can reach out to and get some help. So, and just be 21 years of older. Play by the rules, guys. Don't play by the rules. Get your picks. It's free money. Let's get back into the episode. 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 What's your favorite special? Um, actually, Nate Bargatze's first special... The one he did after um, the stand-ups. Yeah. Tennessee uh, Kid. Yeah, yeah Tennessee yeah. Kid. Or wait, no. Th- was that the second one? No, 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 no. Tennessee Kid was yeah. the first one. That was probably my favorite special. And then um, uh, I love mm, John Mulaney's uh, yeah. second special, Comeback Kid. That's Anything with Kid. Favorite. Yeah. Such a great. Love kids. <laughs> love kids. Love <laughs> Can't them. Can't get enough of them. Yeah. I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Uh, definitely live at the Purple Onion. Yeah, and then uh, so good. <clears throat> I think I think it's called Party, like one of the early Nick Swartzen ones. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought was I'll still just that's the probably the only one where I go through Spotify or Apple Music and yeah. listen to the jokes individually. Yeah, because uh, that's just that's I loved I love him so much because he can talk about diarrhea. And yeah. It's, 
top shelf <laughs> fucking A plus writing. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like he's just talking about his cat yeah. having diarrhea. Yeah. It's one of my favorite jokes ever. I don't even know if it's from that special, but he's like, My cat's been having diarrhea lately. I brought it to the vet, and the vet's like, okay, well, what have you been feeding it? And he's like, I don't know, diarrhea. <laughs> like, that's just fucking awesome. Like, he's the silliest but most well-written dude, I yeah. think. So I love that. Um, and then, I mean, I'm from Massachusetts, so Bill Burr was probably one of the first dudes. I was sure, yeah. Him. Emotionally Unavailable, I think, is his first one. Yeah. I like everybody's first thing, I've come to realize. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but because I think maybe it's the first time you watch it, and you, yeah. know, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. Not like everything's different, but I know what's, I know what, who he is. Your first introduction to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also it's the first thing they've made. So it's like pent up, you know, energy for so many years mm-hmm. and it finally gets to come out in a, in a special. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's gotta be no, there's gotta be like, I, I can't imagine how it feels the first day of filming your special, how nerve wracking that would be. I feel like at, you, you would feel like the culmination of everything you've done. And you're like risking everything for this one shot. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's terrifying. It's pretty terrifying, and it's also like the the way in which you shoot it. it. Like you learn a lot that first time. You learn that when you fuck something up, it doesn't matter. Like the audience that is there is not the audience. It's in the camera. That's the at home. So like when you fuck up a line, you're like, oh, hey, we're just gonna go back. I'm gonna say that again. How about everyone be here? Everyone be super fucking chill. Interesting. Act like you hadn't heard me do it. I was over here. It'll be quick. We'll get right into it. And the audience, like, they love that they're cameras. Mm-hmm. And they love that. They're, and they're almost like, oh, yeah, do it. And they almost give you more. <laughs> so that second time, you'll do the joke again. Mm-hmm. And now suddenly they're like, yeah! They're, like, really cheering. Outside of comedy, what are you watching the most of, you think? I don't really watch much of anything. I feel like... Uh, like simple quick hit dumb comedy tv shows i probably watch the most like i think you should leave is like right up my alley of like great i can digest all this tonight i'll do it all but the New overly three weeks yeah yeah, yeah i'm three, so excited three weeks May third. overly dramatic stuff i while i want to be in it and act in it and really appreciate the acting i don't really go to it a lot because it's just so heavy and i think it's wildly entertaining i think those shows are great but I, for me, everything's heavy enough in real life that I'm like, I don't want to add to it mm. by having to think about this story or what's happened. And, you know, so my wife can watch everything. I kind of hang back. I started a show like Winning Time. I started that and I loved it. And I think I'm four episodes in. And for whatever reason, I haven't gone back to finish it. And it's truly a show I loved watching. Succession is the same. Um, I watch a lot of like docu-series or documentaries, stuff like that. How brutal is it having to watch TV with your daughter? I imagine it's... I don't know how old she is, but... You know, she's seven. It's actually not that bad. It, what's crazy is there is so much content that my daughter... And we limit how much TV she can watch. We limit, like, days and times that she can go sit down. Bec- you know, I, I don't know how old you guys are, but, you know, that... this Like, the streaming thing is, like, it's another world. Whereas, like... I told my wife, I was like, if her addiction to watching stuff get ever got out of control, I was like, we don't have to get rid of TV. I was like, just get rid of like streaming because watching cable, now that you're at the mercy of the schedule of TV, you don't, you're, you're like, all right, my show ended, but I can't watch it mm-hmm. again. My daughter has watched seasons, an entire series of shows that I have only done maybe four times my whole life. She's already done it 20 times over with some... Uh, things she just breezes through these cartoons. She's like, yeah, now watch season four. Just finished season four, and I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> like as a kid, I didn't know there were seasons to TV shows. Yeah. And that that wasn't a thing I understood. I was like, yeah, it's just it's on at eight, <laughs> so you watch it, and whatever episode that is, like you know, most shows I watched, it wasn't you didn't watch the week before. It didn't matter. Like it was just multicams and stuff. But I never at any point was I was like, oh yeah, this is the start of a new season of the story of a thing. Like I didn't track yeah. Yeah. that stuff, you know? Neither did we. Because, I mean, obviously there was Netflix and everything. Yeah. But... I would have to like fill in the gaps. Like if I was watching like Avatar Last Airbender when I was a kid, I would miss like 10 episodes and I, I had no shot of trying to figure out what was happening. Right. I just had to like <clears throat> accept that I wasn't going to know what was yeah, going Yeah, you weren't going to be able to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they used to write TV shows like that where like it didn't matter if you watched, I mean, they still do with like network TV, but like it didn't matter if you missed like a bunch of episodes. But now like 
you know, like Succession, Game of Thrones, like you need to know every detail of every episode. Yeah. Or you can't move forward. Yeah. Same with Peppa Pig. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great thing too. Like with the talking about the kids programming, like there's some great shows that I can easily sit and watch with her. It's not like nauseating or anything. And there's so many options, but I think that's what's mind blowing is that there's so many options for all of us that it's insane. Like the landscape of us, like pitching shows or trying to like get anything made is like, it's like, Oh yeah, there's more places making stuff, but to have anything meaningful survive or be seen is such a puzzle because it just gets lost in the mix of yeah. so many things. Yeah. That's, <laughs> just, I mean, that's one problem we deal with here. Like, there's an ocean of content out. Yeah. So all we're doing is like competing for eyeballs. For yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's pretty sad. I always think about kind of what you said with bands putting out albums. I'm like, we're making too much shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really are. Yeah. Like, we put, we're putting out small sketches, but four or five a week. Yeah. Like, that's gross <laughs> who gives a fuck dude like, like sometimes we're putting them out i'm like this all right oh, this one's it. gonna like, bomb yeah, no, yeah. Gonna... yeah i have a guy putting up clips now for me and I, he, he does like three a week and i'm always like and i know i've got friends or some followers that are like yeah i just had to mute you i can't handle it and i'm like i would mute me yeah. I, like i i go but the business is i gotta put this stuff out so more and more people see it and hopefully like buy tickets to the tour or like go see a movie or watch a tv show i was like that's how you got to stay afloat. But I know what you mean. You feel so, it feels like you're overexposing yourself, but there's so much content that if you don't keep up, I mean, that's, and that's sort of an element with stand up too. I've always like despised this need to keep up in stand up where I'm like, ah, you know, maybe on TV or on a global scale, people haven't heard of you, but you can still travel and go do shows and get mm -hmm. paid for it. It might not be the money that you, you want, but I hate the idea of like, Every two months, you got to have something. You got to start a new tour. You got to do all of it. Like, people can do it. But for me, I'm like, I, I don't know. It doesn't make me feel like I have something of substance to really go out with. Yeah. yeah. What's, uh, where are you going on this tour? Um, we just, the sh it just started. I don't know when this will drop, but we just started. We were in, uh, Florida. So, Florida, but Panama City Beach, Mobile, um, uh, Lafayette, and New Orleans. But it's going to be in the Northeast. Boston's coming up. New York, oh, cool. Philly, D.C. I'm really looking forward to that. But trying to get everywhere. Like some cities I haven't been and then major markets I've been to over and over again. Um, yeah, it's fun. Touring's fun. I haven't done it really since my last Netflix special. And now I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it is fun to go around and just do one show in a place a night and get in the car and just move to the next place, you know. Where are you playing in Boston? Uh, the Wilbur. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping like that, that's a, that's the thing too. Like I'm, we're taking a, a stab and being like, all right, let's try to sell some venues. I've never really played that are definitely bigger than I've played. So I think the Wilbur holds like a thousand or twelve hundred, something like that. So yeah, that one I'm I'm excited about because I'm like, all right, let's let's see how many people we can put in here. And also Boston's such a great market. Every time I perform there, it's been so much fun. So yeah, that's where I started doing stand up. I love going back. And yeah, doing shows there. It's great. I never know how small the city actually was in terms of like proximity. Like when I've been there, I've just gotten on a bike and been like, oh, you can kind of go everywhere. It's really fun. I mm -hmm. loved it. And yeah, especially the Wilbur. It's like right. Yeah. You think like when you come to Boston, it's like you're like, oh, I can see Fenway and then I can just go down here and then there's the place I'm going later. Yeah. It's really easy. It's all, yeah. Very, not that you want to walk at all, but it is walkable. I mean, I was shooting a movie with Amy Schumer there. I feel pretty. We shot a lot of it in Boston. And I had a lot of days I wasn't working and I would go out and just explore. And I couldn't believe how much of the city I actually covered. I would do like that bike rental, you know, with your credit card or whatever. And you have like 30 minutes or whatever to get to the next mm -hmm. yeah. thing. It was the best shape I've ever been in too. <laughs> Cause I was like just dri riding around like a 12 year old yeah. on a bike in a city with like money. It's like, this is great. Yeah. I, 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 it'll be exciting to get back there. Nice. When are you doing that? That is April 20th. 420, dude. Oh, 420. Oh. Nice. Wait, 420, so, Wilbur. Emily, this uh, episode drops Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. 14th and 15th, where are you going to be? So you know? two, I'll be in Tucson and Phoenix. That's the next leg. Uh, this Friday, this Friday, Saturday. Yeah, 14th is Tucson and the 15th is Phoenix. And then uh, after that, we head to the Northeast. Um, so yeah, if anyone is listening or watching and you're interested, RoryScoville.com has the whole tour all the tickets all that jazz but yeah it's been 
it's been fun. Like I'm excited for some of these cities. Truly, Chicago. I I love Chicago, and we booked a bigger venue than usual, and it's sold out four months in advance. And that's like wow, that's a new world for me. I haven't been touring, and I don't usually do that. So that's that's been an exciting component of, of this so that's fucking awesome guys go, see him. go, go buy see him tickets live. do it thank you so much for coming on man this oh thanks for yeah, really me. i love it, it. Yeah. yeah i appreciate it no problem uh yeah anything else tour anything else you want to plug tour uh i do a show if 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 people are in los angeles i try to do stuff locally at a lesion theater you guys ever go there I haven't been. Oh yet. my god, it's great! It's such a great theater. Holds like 140 people. I've been doing Monday nights there. My show called the Whatever Show. Um, yeah, and it's been so much fun. It's the the schedule's adjusted now because of this tour, but yeah, um, doing doing that and then uh, physical season three, I think, is going to drop at some point this summer. And then uh, I've got my own podcast, uh, Pen Pals. We got to get you guys on it. It's so much We'd fun. Love to. Yeah. yeah, cool. All right, sweet. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys, for Appreciate joining. It.